YouTube. This is Gamer Dad. Uh, this we're going to be starting our tenth video in the Pong tutorial series uh, here. Uh, this one will be on sound effects. Uh, I've decided. I know I mentioned in the last video I was going to maybe put some background music in or something. I'm just going to stick with uh, the blip sound effect for when the ball is hitting the paddles or the walls. Um, once you see how this is done, you should be able to add add whatever sounds you guys would like. So um, with that, this should be a pretty quick video possibly the final video in the series uh, unless I, I hear other words that you guys want maybe um, a state machine put in like I mentioned before but uh, like I said keep me up to date um, and after I'm completed with this series I'll probably start um, getting ready on another one and posting some tutorials on possibly a 2D shooter or something um, so with that let's get going uh, we're gonna start in the ball class and uh, I mentioned before also we're gonna handle um, the sounds uh, within the ball class because this is where majority of our collision is happening in the ball class here when it's hitting the walls and then we can add stuff to our game1.cs with the collision to the paddles afterwards so we're going to start up here in our ball class and uh, we're going to add a public sound effect we're just going to call it blip um, we're going to go down in the ball constructor we're going to assign that So blip equals content dot load, and the reason uh, I added this early when we first created the ball class is um, if if you create a separate class and you want to be able to use the content over here within that class, then you need to add this line to your constructor uh, just for future reference. So it's blip equals content dot load. It is a sound effect, and we just called it. Um, Actually, I already imported the wave when I was testing this, but uh, to do that, you just right-click your content, add an existing item. You will select your your sound effect file, your wave file, and add it. So now that's in there, it's just called blip. Go back here, and now it'll be loaded in the constructor for the ball. So, and it's pretty simple. All you do to play that sound effect is uh, we're going to go down here into our ball. Uh, update function and every time uh, the ball is colliding with something in these if statements so uh, there's quite a few of them if you remember uh, we're just gonna have that sound effect played when it hits so uh, we'll start adding those and the, the code for that is blip dot play and that's it uh, we're just gonna copy that put it in the rest of our uh, else statements that where the ball is colliding with something and that's it so the sound effect will play every time the ball hits one of the walls so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our game1.cs we'll save that off and build it make sure I didn't have any typos anywhere in there did not so um, where we're going to head to in our game1.cs is down here in our two um, in our update function we have uh, our colliding with paddle one and are colliding with paddle 2. So um, what we're going to want to do is play that sound uh, in each of these if statements within those colliding with paddles. So do the same thing and in the, and since it's uh, the ball class, we're not in the ball class anymore we're in the game 1, the code will be a little different. So it'll be um, ball.blip.play You can copy that put it in the next statement, go down to colliding with paddle 2, add it there, and one more time in ball moving up right. That is it. I mean this this is pretty simple and if I didn't miss anything we should be able to build this and our sound effect will play every time it makes contact with a wall or paddle. So let's build this, no errors, and run. Alright, let's test it with the paddle. Right wall, bottom wall, top wall, left wall, and both both paddles. So we're good to go. Our score is keeping track. 
and we're getting our sound effect played. Uh, sounds are really easy to add in XNA. Uh, if you wanted to, for example, put some background music in, you could just add another sound effect in your game1.cs. Um, you know, up here, just make another, you know, uh, sound effect. Name what you want. Load it into your game content and um, in the constructor for your game you could just uh, call it there. If you know some uh, dorky friends like myself uh, that like to code and are into game programming, this is a good place to start. You kind of get the basics uh, of working with X and A. Uh, toss me a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you like the series because there's going to be more to come. And uh, everyone have a good new year and I will talk to you soon.